Okay, well, we're going to look at Lizardu patterns and how to make them. The best description of a Lizardu pattern is a single parametric curve of two rectangular curves, usually of the sine function, which, according to Wikipedia, describe complex harmonic motion. In electronics, this is the matter of inputting two sine waves into a scope, one on the vertical axis and one on the horizontal axis. The fun of Lizardu patterns can be had when the frequency of one of these inputs is changed slightly. Since I don't have an electronic sine wave generator, I'm going to use the audio output from the computer right here, and then I'm going to uh, split the two sine waves over a stereo circuit, which is basically how any computer audio output does it anymore, and that will go across a headphone to RCA cable. One RCA cable will go into the vertical input of the scope. The other I have uh, wired to the horizontal input terminal. In the right hand box of the scope I have the basic horizontal controls such as the frequency, the fine-tuned frequency, and the sync. Now since we're using, uh, we're not using horizontal syncing in this example, and so we don't actually need this whole right-hand panel here. Instead, we switch our uh, sync and horizontal amplification to the external pin, which is this pin here. This splits the horizontal off of what they would probably call unity and puts it on its own circuit completely. Now instead of a horizontal line, such as if we were to come over to uh, a regular sine wave, or any wave really, you would have a horizontal line that would show you a curve of your vertical input. But since we're using, we want to, this is a parametric equation, we want to have both axes completely independent of each other so that each can display a function on them. Now remember we have the right hand channel of the audio set as the vertical input and we have the left hand channel as the horizontal input. Over here on the computer you can see I have Audacity open and we have a single wave form. This is a sine wave. Okay. Audio programs give you the ability to pan the sound left and right. And here we have our panning left and right. You can kind of see it up here in this corner. I have it all, totally on the right, totally on the left. This allows you to put the audio either in one speaker or the other, or one headphone, earphone, or the other, and let you listen to both sides of the stereo feed that you're have giving independently. Now this we can visualize, but first off, we need to notice that when we play this audio back, we have a diagonal line on our scope. We have a diagonal line on the scope. This particular parametric equation is two identical sine waves on top of each other, which is one sine wave split between two channels. That's basically how it is. We can display the panning by panning to the right, which we know is vertical, or panning to the left, which is horizontal. And this is just trigonometry here. You have a horizontal part and a vertical part to any angle. Very fairly simple. Now let's open up the capability of our audio source. Right now we're looking at a single sine wave. Let me play this again. We're looking at a single sine wave split over two channels left and right. But the fun of Lizardu appears when we change these two channels independently. So in Audacity, let's create a new track. Actually, in Audacity, I have two tracks already set up. They're completely identical, both at 220 Hz. They're on separate tracks in the program. This lets us edit them uh, independently of each other. Now, if we were to play these two channels at the same time, we would see something like this. 
unfortunately you see these brighter bits at the end of the curve. This is because it is clipping. Right now, the two audio channels that are playing are additive in their volumes on top of one another. So what we need to do is specify one to be right and one to be left. This can be done either on the submenu saying this is the left channel, this is the right channel, or you can use the panning on the left side there. So if we were to play this again and pan to the right, you would see some interesting effects there. But that's the right channel and that's the left channel, which is basically identical to our original waveform. It's two identical waveforms split over two tracks, like our previous, which was one waveform split over two tracks. Now we've just doubled it and specified one for one and one for the other. We could have some fun with this too if we were to specify both as right or both as left you would see these little loops at the top and that's just the clipping that's just the effect of the clipping okay frequency changes now that we have two channels separated on the same frequency we can change the frequency of one and see the effects that it might have here you can see Let's mute these out. Here you can see I have a 220 Hz channel and a 221 Hz channel. The 220 is on the left, the 221 Hz is on the right. This is a 1 Hz difference between these two, which is barely anything, and you'd probably not be able to hear it. If you looked closely, you could see there's a slight difference as you pan across the waveform. Now if we look at this, we play this back, we'll see the effect, starting at the beginning, and we play a rotating circle. This is because real time, the phase of these two waveforms is constantly changing. Now let's, let's pull it up just a bit more. Let's go to 222 instead of 221 it spins a little faster. And this will keep doing this as long as you keep going up. However, there is an effect. If you turn on one waveform and another waveform, and if they are in some sort of ratio with one another, whole number ratio, they will actually be in tune or stable, and you will be able to see a sub-pattern of the original circle, more like it's almost twisted up or something. Watch. This is a waveform of a 2 to 3 Lizardue pattern. The right channel is running at 40 Hz and the left channel is running at 60 Hz. And there's a bunch of uh, ratios like this. Some of the examples given on Wikipedia are 1 to 2, 3 to 2, 3 to 4, 5 to 4, 5 to 6, and 9 to 8. They've got patterns for each of those and they're all stable patterns. I've changed the frequency of this curve here from negative 12, uh, multiple of 60, minus 12 to plus 12. It's like a frequency ramp from a low frequency to a higher frequency. We'll play this back along with our 40 hertz. Actually, let's play it back with our 60 hertz. We have a 60 hertz vertical baseline, and then we have frequency ramp on the left channel horizontal from negative 12 times something to 12 times something. Let's watch what happens. You can see the different effects and the different stabilities and the different harmonics of the two waveforms of the two sine waves reacting with one another. You can tell there was the center point there, and then it turns around and goes even more and more and more. Anyhow, phase changing. Let me try the 220 up above. We'll try it. 220 left, 220 right. Yes, here's our regular diagonal line. We'll slip it. It just suddenly got wider. We'll slip it again. It got even wider. And so we can tell that this diagonal line is not actually a diagonal line at all. It's actually a circle turned on edge. 
there's a completely inverted one, well, almost completely inverted. And then back to our original, or close to original. And by doing this, I'm just going into Audacity and slipping one of the tracks left or right, depending on which way I want to go. Now, if I had this capability on this knob here, I could do that manually as it was running, and you would be able to see the, the circle open and close. So there you have it, the basics of Lizardue patterns. There are plenty of articles all over the internet showing the mathematical equations for these knots, and making your own is one of the funnest things you can do with your OSCO.